Fellander, founder of NKI. Wonderful uh, to be here. And thrilled to see that you're burning for the topic AI ethics. Um, going back, before I was the chief economist at Swedbank, I worked 10 years with macroeconomic forecasting and risk scenarios at the Ministry of Finance and then at the Prime Minister's office during the financial crisis. And I got fascinated by the hidden values, what was happening underneath, what could not be measured. So when I became the chief economist at Swedbank, I did research on the hidden values of digitalization, the positive externalities, consumer surplus. So we did and implemented new productivity measures, inflationary indices. This positive externality I saw in 2016 was shifted into a negative externalities when AI and data-driven technologies were entering organizations. So I started a multidisciplinary research team at the Royal Institute of Technology with the legal, the technical, and business ethical perspective. So what we did there was we found an ethical AI risk assessment methodology. And this methodology was uh, tested and vetted in a sandbox environment with policy regulators, startups, public sector, private sectors, civil society actors, and also got state funding. And with that foundation, I started Ank.ai, that was former AI Sustainability Center. And now we are an ethical AI governance platform for screening, assessing, and mitigating and governing ethical risks in AI applications. So as you've heard today and will hear tomorrow, AI creates enormous values for society, business, individuals, and the economy as a whole. Yet, ungoverned, it opens the door for costly ethical pitfalls and legal breaches. Since AI is self-learning and self-scaling with lo low transparency and explainability, the risks or the mistakes can scale beyond control. So what are the risks? Uh, we categorize them in six. Uh, privacy intrusion, so even though you are GDPR compliant, AI can create insights that are privacy intrusive for you. By different consents in different apps, you, ha you no longer as a citizen, as a consumer, have control and insights. Discrimination. So, as a coder, there is different, a different approach to fairness than in the legal team, right? So there's no manual of how you code your organization's ethical principles. You do it intentionally or unintentionally, but it can scale beyond control. We can have social exclusion, we can have lost autonomy when AI is fulfilling the goal of profits, increased engagements and clicks, or increased upsales. It can actually lose the human right for making autonomous decisions. And you've heard about that example, what happens when you put your iPhone on the table. How many decisions you really want to have an algorithm um, do for you because it makes your life easy. It's time efficient. You get tailored recommendations and nudging into something that you are comfortable with. But do you know when upsells and nudging becomes unethical, when you actually lose your autonomy? So disinformation is another risk 
um, risk when you have filter bubbles that actually harm democracy. So the trade-off between censorship and freedom of speech is extremely business critical, but yet it cannot be made in the tech silo. Harm to safety. Did you know that 80-90% of all health data is made on male bodies? Physiology doesn't make ourselves as women safe, right? So a couple of risks uh, that has actually, we see many examples of. One of them recently has been the UK government migration office had an algorithm for detesting newly immigrants for language, English language tests, and to see who was um, cheating. It just so happened that the algorithm was faulty um, claiming too many for cheating on the language tests, and they were sent back. So very by a government that needs to have the highest standard and test applications before they go to market. There's actually no go-to-market readiness or product validation that it is in every other um, type of product or service that comes to market. So in the financial business, I know I can't see you right now, but you know I have friends from Swedbank. There you are. Um, and it's, it's been a lot of examples when a female and a male has got different uh, decisions on applying for loans when they have exactly the same financial situation. Based on that, the data the algorithm learned, we see that male have a, a, a history of being stronger financially. And the same goes for HR, AI, AI solutions, when you have seen uh, that they, the candidates for CEO positions have been white males, for example. So the correlation between what's a good the skill set for a CEO as when screening CVs could be uh, execution or determined leadership, what, what have you, that has historically been male norms for good leadership. Now there's another world. So from, from again talking about this shift, from that AI is increasing transparency, slashing middle hands, uh, democracy by validation among peers on the platform now shifts to a black box where we have to deal with historic norms that we do not accept to anymore. So we have to demystify this, right? And get this straight. But the problem is not only that AI has low sense of explainability, or it has to do with that AI solutions are often developed in organizational silos without this aligned and visualized decision-making on these critical decisions. How smart can a city be? How smart can a car be? How smart can a house be before it intrude, intrudes our privacy? So we really need to have a dance with three. It takes three to tango. The business team, the legal team, and the tech team. So when you talk about fairness, for example, fairness, you trade off fairness for precision. But we know that that cannot be always aligned with for example, discrimination for minorities or women. And also another perspective, that's the legal perspective, but the business perspective is also where is this AI solution used? And how can it be misused, overused? That's where you need to have the business focus and align and visualize. So in this uh, AI ethical risk assessment framework methodology, 
we identified four root causes, immature AI and data, in the case with the, the UK governance, when there are actually no testing requirements and go-to-market readiness. It could also be that the data is insufficient. I mean, this is very often so the case. Data bias, when the data is not reflecting the reality or the preferred reality. It's not only the data, it's the behavior of the data. Misuse or overuse of data. When you have a drone that is going to uh, detect um, insects on a tree, and it's used for good reasons, but someone uses it for uh, evaluating if there's idle summer houses for burglary. Bias of the creator, we talked about that, and I want to also reflect on the Starbucks example when, when 6,000 calories were nudged on young cohorts because the algorithm had learned that the margins on sugar products were so much higher than on coffee. So it's very important to have this ethical filter because the AI does not work as our humans. It doesn't have an ethical compass. It has the, the target values and goal values we give it. But none of these examples of legal breaches and ethical fit pitfalls, will no, they will no longer happen in the Europe. Because 2024, we have an EU regulation coming. It requires massive reporting on AI performance and a new type of governance. Okay, so the ones that do this in a best frictionless way will win. Otherwise, it will be an administrative burden, a hell. This is a GDPR moment. So Margareta Verstage from the EU, EU Commission she said when she announced this proposal in April last year, we are not going to stand and watch how AI is violating EU citizens' human rights. We're going to do this to be competitive towards China and, e and, and US. We're going to do this to have clear guardrails so that innovation and productivity can flourish. There are critics. I mean, regulation is not... It's always second best with regulation. Yet, what it... Inc it I mean, it, it is a reality, so there's no time to, to, uh, to be um, um, de debating about it. It's a fact. And there will be higher sanctions than GDPR. So, for example, some AI will be banned Social scoring, uh, facial recognitions as undetermined, and manipulation and capitalization of data. So remember, these are un often not social scoring, but often these pitfalls that I talked about, they're unintended. So it's no, like the times are over for ungoverned AI. You need to screen all your AI solution. And also, AI is determined as very broad, so it could be hard-coded data. If this happens, do that. That's AI in this regulation. That's how broad it is. But for the high risks, and that, fi that is financial sector, hey, you have to nudge your uh, friend because he's falling asleep. Hey, financial sector <laughs> will be part of this regulation. So, and this is high-risk um, areas. Also transportation, education, recruitment, transportation, so it's a lot of sectors. And they will have to undergo a risk assessment to uphold explainability, transparency, and take accountability for acting when something is wrong, proving that they are maintaining responsible AI, but also, most importantly, robust governance and a human in the loop. So, there are some sectors that are identified as low risk. So, for example, Giovanni, working as um, chief ethical AI officer at IKEA, you are low risk. 
So what you are working with could be um, a very privacy intrusive. I know you're not doing it because you're, you're responsible, but what you could be exposed to is business critical risks that a, a chatbot, for example, is under limited risk. So the only requirement with this e-regulation is that you'll have to say that you're a chatbot. Hey, I'm IKEA chatbot. And you also have to have your code of conduct. conduct. But we all know what happens to Microsoft chatbots that got racist. So there's a lot of business risks, even though you are complying to this upcoming regulation. But I would say it's an era, it's a shift. It's a totally new era where we have to demystify AI tech teams. So they have to take a stand to see with an ethical filter, we can actually deploy and implement AI that is trustworthy. So with an ethical filter, you can accelerate this responsible AI. And what I mean with that is you start with the regulatory risk. You still have business risk. If you identify the business risks, this is where you can have a competitive edge because there's social concern. I read in an IBM study that 80% uh, of CEOs are concerned and want to do ethical AI, but only 40% of the consumers that were asked relied on them to do it. So it's all about trust. So you have to walk your talk, right? You can't just say, I do fair AI. Okay, how do you code diversity? How do you code sustainability? So, so, so this is a whole different era of reporting and governance. Once you say, I have these business risks, you can turn them into opportunities and say, hey, the only power that consumers and citizens has is our opt-in, right? That we can use. The winner is the opt-ins, right? So we built this platform. And it's because we truly believe in the ANC team that we cannot tolerate our human values being violated. But it's actually an auditing platform. We want to change the world, but what this is, is to your audit committees and to say, okay, we do AI that is conforming to our organizational values and complying to regulation. That's what it is. So what it does, it visualizes these exposure to risks, and it has the three persons, the business, tech, and legal align on these critical business decisions. But what you actually do is you make this frictionless highway for innovations humans can trust, because we need speed in this. In Sweden, we're kind of leading laggers, right? We were so proud of taking the step and being really one of the world leading digitalization nations. Now we're falling ahead, behind. But in order to be among the nations that actually can, without the heavy administrative burden from the new regulation, and without brand and reputational risks from these mistakes, I mean, you go out of market and you do it for good, right? There's no turning back if you discriminate or violate in this way. Um, so key takeaways, I have 0.46 seconds left. So I, I think you all are aware that AI poses ungoverned risk. It's not, it's not no one, it's not, I'm not blaming anyone here. It's just that every organization needs an, to, to, to fill in the gaps between the silos. So it's actually that AI that has been working in an organizational silo, in an academic silo with seductive profits. And GDP moment is here. Better prepare. It's around the corner. And it will require heavy reporting. But see it as a gift, because you can use it in ESG purposes. You can use this and, and actually create a lot of trust towards your client, saying, hey, we take responsibility. How we use your data on your behavior and preferences. That creates trust, 
better opt-in, and everyone's happy. And also this cross, new cross-functional governance. In Sweden, we're superstars at this. The Nordic values, collaborative, transparent, non-hierarchical, and value-driven. So we ought to be best in class, and I think we will. So you're all welcome to uh, try the platform. Thank you.